I think um, again there are so many companies around it doesn't have to be Google and Apple right they can start with some tracks <laughs> you can start with a PCB um, fabrication a manufacturer or anywhere I mean like the skills that you guys have if it's in China you can find you, you can get 10 offers now but you know US is a little bit harder to get a job but I mean still it shouldn't be hard as an engineer you know how to lay out the PCB how to program my controllers uh, algorithms and also whatever you are learning this semester ASIC and um, Verilog so Verilog is important be an overachiever do not just learn whatever cover in the curric uh, in the syllabi um, in bad devices right so Verilog fabrication digital design I mean it's easy to get a job just by just by coding Verilog system Verilog easy Depends on what you want to do, right? Just start with a job, which is really sweet, so you can cover all the, can pay the, all, all the bills and pay the student loan quickly. You know, I want to be a professor because I don't have any student loans because the situation was dirt cheap in China. And, um, when people ask me why do I want to be a professor, it's because of the four months some break and the one month winter break and four, five months break totally a year that's the only reason actually but I enjoy teaching as well I mean so so for the uh, in here the full load is uh, one one lecture plus a lab like this and another lecture and that's done that's that's full load right just teach two lectures and one lab that's full load and I'm doing some uh, uh, administration stuff for the for the department this semester uh, it's called ABAT accredit accreditation so uh, my load was reduced further so i'm only teaching this class and the lab and that's it uh, so i just need to come over to the to the campus right before the class and 55 minutes later i'm going to go home and do whatever i can do at home so i think it's pretty sweet job uh plus the summer break oh my goodness that's <laughs> you couldn't find any other jobs can give you like four five months break every year Uh, it does require you to work really hard until your late 20s. I got my PhD degree in my 30s, uh, when I was 30 years old, right before I was 30 years old. And when I was showing my uh, kindergarten daughter, five years old daughter, a couple of days ago, because this is the first year she uh, went to the kindergarten, and I was drawing all the schools she needed to take in the future on the board. She was like, oh my goodness. So five years for elementary school, and then three years for middle school, and four years for high school, and four years for, for college, right? And that's not even enough. <laughs> Take three years, two years or three years for your master's, and then five years for PhDs, and then two years for postdoc, and then find a factory job. <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of schooling. <laughs> but you can you know, after the college, I think you should be relieved because uh, if you find a uh, graduate program, normally they pay everything. You cannot buy a house, but you can survive pretty comfortably. Uh, like in, in California, all these uh, big institutions, they are probably paying stipend. I'm only saying stipend. So the tuitions are all paid and insurance is covered. And only stipend, they are giving you probably thirty thousand dollars a year just for living in California. But in Nevada it can be only twenty thousand dollars a year uh, stipend. Uh, in the East probably twenty, a little bit more than twenty thousand dollars. So you can you can survive. You can afford a use the car, use the Camry, two thousand five and <laughs> uh, you can cover everything. But after that, you know, a good life will come. Uh, you can enjoy the summer break all the time. And you don't you don't have to find a, a research institution because they will push you really hard to acquire external funding to support a lab. But if you only find a teaching teaching institution or coming to college, that's easy. Just just teach, right? And if you want to start up a company, you can do so as well. Um, it'll be really flexible. 
But start with a industry job is a good option as well. Depends on what you uh, what you want to do. Either way, it's great. So for the quiz, have I started recording? I think so. Yeah. I will do it really quick because I have done this so many times since last week. It's a VL, right? And here's five volts. Here's zero. Here's five volts. Two R. Uh, is that R? Two R. R. Two R. R. Two R. I mean, definitely you can use node voltage method or KCL, right? So what is KCL? You can find out all the nodes and look at the currents flow, flowing into the nodes and add them together. And the current is, the sum, summation of the current into flowing into the node is zero. KCL, right? We're flowing out from the node is zero. Either way, you can do that. But imagine if you have an 8-bit DAC, so you are going to have eight linear equations. I mean, so that's why sometimes you want to you want to do this. And if there's only one or two of the bits are set, right? Do we really want to have eight linear equations or just do superposition? I mean, just two sources. So in this case, this is grounded. So it's not contributing anything. Remember, superposition. Why do we use superposition? Because it's so sweet for this case. We don't have to look at all the details since we just know that this 5 volts here is contributing how many LSBs? One LSB. And this is contributing how many LSBs? Four. Right? Is that four? So this is contributing four LSBs. This contributes two LSBs, because this is D0, this is D1, this is D2, right? But now it's not contributing at all, so you don't have to add it, yeah, add it to the, the final VL here, right? So for the five volts here, you just, so this circuit actually, you can convert it to, so this part, you can treat it as this, from this node to R, 5 volts ground, right? So all the following circuit here is a load. It's a black box, right? You can say R load or whatever. So just treat it as R load and just apply Stephanie's equivalent circuit to this. You remove the load and looking backwards. Oh no, another one. And look backwards, RTH will be, so short this guy, RTH will be R. And ETH will be a half of this voltage because this is a voltage divider. RL is removed. And this is a voltage divider. So the voltage here will be ETH. So this one can be converted to 2.5 volts. This is R, right? I just keep doing this, right? Then you can solve all the voltages to uh, uh contributed to this to this point. So this guy, this can replace whatever here. So R and this R will be in series and just add them together. You got two R. And this is not contributing anything, voltage divider. Or you can use uh uh thevenings, right? Again, so this being divided again. Um, and you got an R for the RTH as well. So just keep going, keep going until here. So you can find out VL is actually this one, which is one OSB. It's uh, five volts divided by how much? This voltage. How many bits? Three bits, right? So one OSB is how much? Right? And this guy contributes how much? Mm -hmm. 
It's four LSBs, right? Oh, yeah. So four. Yeah. One zero zero is four. Yeah. So divided by two. Is that correct? Two to the third, two to the second, two to the first. <clears throat> so that's zero point six two five volts plus two point five, which is three point one two five volts. All right. Any questions? If I do this quiz again, can you get a hundred? You can there. Okay, great. Nice. So more about ADCs. More about ADCs. ADCs are sweet. There's one really popular architecture of ADC is called successive approximation register ADC or star ADC. Star ADC. And we'll look into the structure of that ADC pretty soon. Okay, before we do that, let's find out DNLs and A and INLs for ADCs first. Okay, let's look at the some of the prints from the textbook. Page, this page, nine forty-eight. Not really hard. So in the homework, so you have a ho homework one due next Monday, right? And uh, on that day, you are going to have a quiz on DACs or ADCs, probably something related to DNL and ALs. And if you look at the homework assignments, there is one problem regarding DAC, DAC, right? These two analog converters, DNL and ANL, uh, DNL and INL conversion in the homework assignment. But there's no analog ADCs, DNL and INL problem over there. So it might be on the quiz or might be on the exam, uh, but eventually you need to know how to uh, how to solve this kind of problem. So there's there are two examples from here. Uh, find out the textbook or whatever you can find, and run through all the examples uh, in these pages. You don't have to read all the entire textbook, right? It's just Couple pages, like less than ten pages. Try to understand that there are two examples, I guess, two or three examples. That's enough. I mean, I'm just telling you, just do this, just do it. Then you're done. Right? It's not like let you read hundred pages of textbook and not let you know what's going to be on the exam. All right? Is that easier? You just need to read it. Just need to run the exam. Run the examples by yourself. That's it. Really specific, right? So here's the. Diagram of the ADC. Uh, let's look at it. Don't look at this first. Just look at this one. So here is the analog input, which is the X axis, and here is the digital output. How many bits of this ADC? Or what's the resolution of this ADC? Three bit or two to the third, right? And here are the inputs. Why the inputs are like this? Fractions, not numbers, analog numbers. Why is one eighth, two eighths, or so on and so forth? That's a V in over V ref, right? So that's the fraction of the V in, in the total V ref, in the total voltage range. Uh, they are analog, right? So these are all the steps. However, if this is the ideal. ADC, you, you you can expect all the steps will be really close to the ideal curve, right? So this won't happen at all. So this dashed line will not happen. This is ideal. Whatever input you have, you are going to have a really uh, close or exactly the same number at the output. It's, won't, that won't happen because this is a digital system. It's not infinite uh, uh, system. It's not ideal, right? So you are going to have steps. But however, if you have a higher resolution, the steps will be smaller. It's getting closer to the ideal curve, right? So in because it's not ideal and because the resolution is so poor, only three bit. So you are going to have a quantization error. 
So these so this curve shows a quantization error. So be careful. Quantization error is all the uh, errors for at every point. It's continuous curve like this. The DNL and INL are different. We are going to look at examples and see. Oh, so DNL is just using the step size of the real ADC minus one LSP, and INL is a step size minus whatever the ideal value is, right? So they are different. The quantization error is something like this. It's a curve that shows all the points, all the errors from the ideal one uh, minus the ideal one from the no minus the real one from the ideal one. Let's look at every point. So for example. Zero, right? Your analog voltage start increasing from zero to whatever on the right side. So the x-axis is input voltage value, right? But however, after it passes the zero point input voltage for the ADC, is it jumping? It has this jumped to another step? No, it's not. It wait until this point it jumps to zero, zero one. So cannot resolve whatever minor changes, analog input changes during this period. So there will be errors. So you can imagine at the very beginning, zero minus zero. So zero on the ideal curve minus the zero of the analog input on the x-axis will be what's the quantization error at zero point? What's the quantization error at the zero point? At the, right at the origin. What's the quantization error? Zero. It's a zero minus zero. So what if the input voltage is here? What's the output? The output is still zero, right? Because you can see it's still here. Still not jumped to this point yet, right? Still at zero. So what's going to happen though? What's the quantization error? So use whatever the analog input. Uh, no, no. Uh, use the ideal analog, ideal um, digital output minus the real case um, and uh, digital output will be the error, right? So here's the ideal one. It should be here, but it's not. It's still zero, right? So use this one minus this one. So here's the error. Uh, that's a positive value. So you can imagine when it's getting closer and closer to one the eighth, um, the quantization error becomes the largest and then drops to the minimum instantly. Why is that? It goes up at this time point. And the, and the rising edge is super steep, right? So when it's closer to here, but not right here yet, you got the largest quantization error, and then there will be a sharp uh, falling edge. So the error becomes zero. It just keep going this again and again. And there's one way to reduce the quantization error from the ADC. Uh, you just shift all the curve to the left by uh, 0.5 LSB. So you can see something like this. So let's take a look at this. Why this is going to reduce the quantization error. Just shift everything to the left by 0.5 LSP. Right? So if you shift everything to the left, and you can see that the differences will be all these gaps, right? So you can see it starts from uh, 0 to 0.5 LSP. And here's the largest one, largest quantization error, and then it um, drops to drops to the uh, negative largest because it jumps to here, from here. You just look at errors. So the, these gaps are the errors, right? You see? So these gaps are actually errors. So you just reflect all the errors to this curve and you can see the quantization errors. Same as this curve. So these gaps are the errors. These gaps are the errors, right? So these, so if you do a, a average quantization error from this curve, you can see it's just a swing from zero to one. So the average probably somewhere around 0 0.5 LSB. 
But you can see here the quantization, the average quantization error here will be less because it's swing around zero. So it's, it's gotten a less, a smaller positive value and also a smaller negative value. So the average error will be less, will be smaller. So now let's look at let's look at one more question here, I think. So here's one question. What's the maximum digital output of the ADC? This ADC. What's the maximum? Here. All right. Is this. If I just give you an N bit ADC, I'm asking you what's the maximum output of the ADC, you need to know it should be 2 to the nth minus 1, right? So how many quantization levels can this ADC uh, offer? Here, these many quantization error, uh, levels, including zero to one on one, right? So all these steps, so they are totally two to the n levels. Let's look at one example here. <clears throat> That's a great ADC. <laughs> so the question is, what are the DNLs? DNL, differential non-linearity, DNL, the actual step width minus the ideal step width, right? Actual minus ideal. A easier way to find out all the values, not in here, but also in NL, let me tell you, because everything has been shifted to the left. So when you are looking at all these DNLs and NLs, just shift everything to the right, to the original place. Um, so for example, I shift everything, but here, here are two things you need to know. If you, it, Since this ADC has been shifted to the left by 0.5 LSB, so the DNL, no, the step size for zero and for this will be different. So this one becomes 0 0.5 LSB will be the ideal step size. Here becomes 1.5 LSB. And that's it. But all the steps in the middle, all the step size, step width in the middle will be uh, the same, 1 LSB. So you're comparing with 1 LSB. But when you just compare here with 0 0.5 LSB and here to... 1.5 LSB, 0, 0 0.5, here, 1.5, for, for the ideal case. All the steps in the middle, just one LSB, keep in mind, okay? So let's take a look at this one. Any DNL here? It's perfectly 0 0.5 LSB, the step size. Just look at the x-axis, right? Perfect. And now start looking at here. Because you need to figure out, if you see something is wrong, uh, whenever you are write down, writing down the answers for the DNLs, you need to make a correct uh, footnote here, right? So this is DNL2, not DNL1. How do you know that? Just shift everything to the right. Shift everything to the right by 0.5 LSB, so you can see the transition is right at here. So for example, I shift everything, starting from here. I shift the curve to the right by 0 0.5 LSB to here. So looking at DNL0, looking at the transition at uh, 1, sorry, 1. So starting from here, and the step width will be, step width for this transition is still 1 LSB. So the DNL1, is zero. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. And shift this guy to here, so you know this point is actually uh, shifting at this point. So look at uh, the step width here. DNL2 will be, see from here, here, that's a step width. That's 1.5 LSB. So use 1.5 minus 1. So DNL2 is 1.5 minus 1, 
which is 0 0.5 LSB. That's how I calculate the DNL for this point. And what about this one? So you shift this one to the right. So it should be right out here. You can see it's only 0 0.5 LSB. Then it start tr transit, uh, transits to this point. So the step size is actually 0 0.5 LSB. So we need to and look at the number here. That's three. So DNL three is 0 0.5 LSB minus one LSB which is minus 0 0.5 LSB. Right. And then this is normal, but this is not normal. And this belongs to four or five. Five, since you want to shift this to the right. So you can see it actually belongs to the to five. So the width is 0 0.5 LSB again. And you can see DNL5 is minus 0 0.5 LSB. It's just narrower, right? What about six? You see the entire thing here, that's the step width for this. So the DNL6 will be 1.5 LSB minus 1 LSB, which is positive. Positive 0.5 LSB. And look, look at this part. This one is aligned to here, and you shift it to the right, you can see it's, it's, this transition is aligned to number 7. But however, since we know that, the ideal step width for number seven will be 1.5 LSB, and this is exactly 1.5 LSB. So just use 1.5 LSB minus 1.5 LSB, so we are getting zero LSB, because the ideal step width is 1.5 LSB at that uh, transition uh, spot, right? Okay. Prepare for it for the quiz or the exam at some point this semester. INL here, that was DNL and now it's INL, integral nonlinearity. Purpose here, use the same method, right? Shift everything to the right so you can see the transition uh, point. But it can detect that. You can directly see if you shift this one to the right, this point is right at the ideal curve, so there's no INL. You agree with that? And you shift this point to here, to the right by 0 0.5 LSB, aligned to number two, and the point is right at the ideal curve, so there's no INL as well. So number zero, number one, number two, no. NLs, where NLs are all zero LSBs, right? It starts from number three. Because if I shift the curve to the right, this one will be aligned to here, right? Okay? So you want to use the actual value minus the ideal value. The actual, actual transition time uh, minus the ideal transition time. So the actual transition time is over here. The tran transition point is over here, which is uh, 3 eighths, right? Minus whatever here, the ideal transition point, which is 5 sixteenths. So 3 eighths minus 5 sixteenths will be this. It's a positive NL. You get that? So for both NLs and DNLs, use the actual point minus, or actual width minus the ideal point, ideal width, right? So this one, you shift everything to here, so you can see here's the actual value, here's the ideal transition point. So just use this one minus this one. And now let's look at another example. So you, you before you're looking at here, the x-axis, you see this part is normal, right? Something is wrong here. Like the method I told you, shift everything to the right so you can find out which number it belongs to, which transition it belongs to, right? Shift it to the right. 
So look at the x, x axis. Which one? 6 or 5? Number 6, right? So shift everything to the right. This one will be aligned to here. Um, so the actual transition point is 5 eighths. Wait. Yeah, because the ideal for the fifth is here. So this one belongs to the sixth. You got that? All right. So the um, here is the ideal point. It should be here. That's ideal. But that's uh, real. So the real minus the ideal, it should be a negative value because this is a five, the eighth minus uh, whatever here. Let me see if that's correct. So this one should be this minus whatever in the middle, right? So that's um, so that's whatever you are going to get. But actually, you don't have to calculate it because you can see this is a 0 0.5 LSB. All right, any questions? It's a little bit confusing. Aliasing. That's the original signal, and you want to use the ADC to sample it and convert it into a digital signal. But however, the sampling rate is super low. It samples here, samples here, samples here, samples here. So when it's trying to recover the signal, it starts, the signal looks like this, aliasing, right? It's not recovering the full signal. So to increase the sampling rate, sample all the points, boom, 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 all the points here, but not just like this. All right. Then the star structure, really interesting structure. That's the same structure the Columbia University, uh, that lab I showed you two guys, the website, uh, that's the same structure they used for their for their chip. That's a 130 nanometer technology. Now let's take a look at the star structure, how that works. It's uh, really interesting. Successive approximation Register ADC, right? So this one for short, SAR. So your Arduino my controller used a 10-bit SAR ADC, right? So there are many different types of structures of ADCs, uh, like Delta Sigma, like pipeline, uh, so on and so forth. Probably five or so are popular ADC structures. So SAR is one of the most popular one and uh, has a lower cost, a lower uh, power consumption, and uh, easy to design. So the resolution is normally 8 to 18 bits. Can reach a very high resolution. And low power. And at mega 320A uses a 10 bit. SAR, ADC. So the structure looks like this. Uh, voltage input, and the first one should be the sample and hold. So samples all the voltage points. And then followed by a comparator. I think I need to do a review of the comparator really quick. And then here is the SAR. So SAR is one of the most important uh, components in the star ADC. 
for example, this is a four bit ADC. And it needs a DAC inside. And the DAC need a VRAF, like 10 volts, for example. For the example, I'm gonna introduce to you guys. And then the DAC will convert whatever it, uh, it has as its specific state and feed it back to the comparator. And that's the entire structure of the SAR. So this, there are four bits over here. And for example, that's B3, B2, B1, B0. And since we know that, um, how the comparator works, how the comparator works, comparator. Subtraction, right? It amplifies the subtraction of the two terminals. So plus minus, that's V in, that's V ref, whatever. That's a different V ref, right? So here's VL. If V ref equals to five volts, <clears throat> V ref. And VDD is 10 volts, for example. Mm. If V in is this, what is V out? Square wave. So it amplifies, amplifies the difference between times a huge <clears throat> open loop gain. So whenever V in is larger than V ref, here should be VDD. Whenever it's lower than that, it should be zero. Like this. Okay. A quick review of the of the comparator. And how this works. Let's look at the look at the table for a state diagram. So if V in equals to uh five point two volts, for example, at one moment. Because V in is a continuous analog voltage, but at one moment the voltage, the V in is 5.2 volts, for example. And so the transition states where the state diagram looks like the following. This is a four bit, four bit star ADC, right? So it starts with 1000. Zero, zero, zero. Always keep in mind how I can make this happen. I'm going to tell you pretty soon. Really interesting sequential circuit structure. So start with 1000. And what is this voltage? What is this voltage? Or what is voltage here? So here is 1000, like this. Okay. Is that 5 volts? Because the VREF is 10 volts. So this is 50% of the entire full scale range. So this will be. 5 volts as a first state. And there will be two branches. The first one, so here's a comparator's, uh, here's a comparator's output, right? Let's say comp, comp. If comp equals to zero, goes to this direction. If comp equals to one, goes to this direction. So if comp equals to zero, what does that mean? The initial value I set for the SAR, which is being converted to uh, through the ADC and feedback to the to the comparator, is larger than or smaller than this, V. 
or 5.2 5 volts. If comp equals to zero, which is larger? Here's larger. Oh, no, no, uh, here, here's larger, right? Wait. Yeah, here's larger. Okay. So V in smaller than VDC. Here's VDC. Then what you want to do is, so for the first state, okay, shift everything to the right and plug in comp to the MSB, to the, to the position of the MSB. So what's going to happen is here, this one goes to here, and whatever here will be shifted to the right, 100. Zero, zero. So what happened to this zero? Shift it out. Died. <laughs> Nowhere. Don't worry about that. So this is what you're going to get, right? So this is all the bits being shifted from here. And this is the comp being plugged into here. So what is this value, though? This is 5. What is this? 2.5. If comp equals to zero, that means V in is larger than VDC, right? Then what you want to do is, or what the SAR is going to do is, still the same thing, shift everything to the right. However, plug in one here. That's whatever has been shifted. Let me keep it black. All right, so what is this one? What is this value here? Five. 5 plus, 5 plus 2.5, right? 7.5 volts. So now let's look at this example. Initially, this star was set to 1000. So which case this belongs to? Second one, because here's 5, here's 5.2, mm, which is, uh, what's the output here? 1. Okay, so this is not the case. Then keep doing this. You definitely don't want to stop here. I have a 5.2 volts, and ADC converted 7.5 volts to me. <laughs> I'm going to steal the company. So then, do it again. If comp equals to zero, then plug that comp to somewhere, I'm going to tell you. But if comp equals to 1, do this direction, right? So when comp equals to 0, which means V in, smaller than VDC, and what you want to do is you want to plug the comp, whatever is the comp right here, which is 0, right behind the previous comp. You know what I mean? So what's the next value? 1, that's the first comp from here, right? Since this comp is one, so I plug in this comp to here. And now I get a second comp output, which is zero. Put it here. And shift whatever here, uh, whatever here, still to the right. So you are having this left. What is this value? So it should be, because this is 2.5, so this part here will be 1.25. No, 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 yeah, 1.25, yes, 1.25, and this is 5, so total A, 6.25. If you don't want to calculate in this way, you can just do whatever, because, uh, um, is that 10 volts? 10 volts over, 10 is the VREF, right? VREF over 2 to the 4th equals to 10 volts divide, uh, divided by 16 steps. So you are getting a value. That's 1 OSB. And you can use whatever here times the 1 OSB so you can get the voltage here. So that's the 6.25 volts uh, for this case. And when comp equals to 1, that means V is um, larger than VDC. And what you want to do is you want to 
still plug in, still plug in this one tool behind the previous comp. So what you are getting is 1110. Ah, it's our black, sorry. These are the bits being shaped, keep, keep being shifted to the right. And that's the second comp. It just plugged in plugged into here. So what is this value? What is this one? I'll directly let you know. So that's uh, 8.75 volts. And which is the case actually happen, happened here? Yep. Why is that? Because 7.5, which is VDC here, is larger than or smaller than 5.2. Larger than, so comp equals to what? Zero, so follows this path. Mm -mm, that's not the case. All right, and then do it again. Is that getting closer to 5.2? So that's why it's called successive approximation register. It's getting closer and closer until some point. So again, comp equals to zero, follows this path, comp will save time, so we are going to Get rid of whatever is not happening. So comp equals to one. Which one is the case? So let's just draw it really quick. If we comp equals to one, we just keep plugging one to there, right? One, 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 one. If we just plug one to there, to here. So the very last one is black, actually. So what is this value? Did I do it right? Um, no, 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 no. Sorry. Um, because it, it, so this state is based on this, right? So it's actually not one. So you should plug in something here while you are shifting these two bits. So it's going to be one, zero, one, one. One zero one one. Right? Watch the video after the lecture if you cannot follow right now. So what is this? It's six point eight seven five volts. And definitely that's not the case because um six six point two five is larger than five point two. So comp equals to zero actually. So this is not the case. So what's gonna happen is here. So we want to plug A. Plug in a zero or one after or in here. Zero. It's going to be one, zero, zero, what? One. So the original one, all the original bits here only has one, a single one left. All the other bits are being shifted out from the resistor. So what is this voltage? This is 5.625 volts. It's getting closer, right? And then another two paths. This comp equals to one, this comp equals to zero. And here you want to plug in what? One zero zero one, right? So what's one zero zero one? Because this one will be shifted out, and you plug in a one here. So all the uh, all the digits should be uh, labeled in the right color. So this is still 5.625, but that's not the case because this is still larger than 5.2 volts. So this is not happening. So what's going to happen is over here. I shift this one out and I'm going to replace it by here. Uh, there should be all red. 5 volts. So start with 100, but after all the transitions, still 100, but that's the closest value to the actual value, which is 5.2 volts, right? That's how you eventually get um, the ADC's output. So remember that there are N plus one states during the conversion. So it won't do any other conversions anymore. So one, two, three, four, five. Done for a four bit. Four bit ADC. Okay, so we're gonna cover more 
on Wednesday. See you tomorrow in the lab.